Hi, my name is Hans Peter Meyer, and today I am sitting in the beautiful garden at Hollyhock with uh, what somebody has described as the godmother of this garden. This is uh, Nori Fletcher. Hi, Nori. Hi. Um, and the, one, the first reason I came to talk to Nori, well, actually I actually talked to her a couple of years ago, it was about the garden as a place of beauty and a place of food. Um, today I was uh, intended to talk about the garden and the new Hollyhock cookbook, but we, our conversation went somewhere else. So we're actually going to talk about what Nori sees as her bottom line here, which is um, what I would call growing gardeners. So can you tell me a little bit about why it's important to you that, that you, um, you have these people come in the garden, that you teach people about this stuff? Well, I think it's important that there's jobs for gardeners so that they can help people grow their own gardens and they can get paid for their work. And why is it important that, that people know how to garden? So they can grow their own food. And that's it. I mean, you do more than grow food here, though. I mean, it, it's beautiful. You got, you've got flowers. Uh, you've talked to me about the, the kind of flavors that, that come on in the spring and stuff like that. Can you describe about uh, like how the garden season starts here? The garden season starts in the greenhouse. And are you talking about the flavors of the yeah, sure. Wherever. garden season? But we start by sowing seeds digging the beds and planting. And you've got, uh, I mean, you've, uh, you've got a small paid crew here, but you've also got people who volunteer, who basically come here for a month to learn about what you do. Is that right? Yes. People, we have a couple people every week come in the garden and work with us. And um, what kind of things are they doing? And, and, and are these like brand new gardeners or are they experienced gardeners? We try and get some people with experience so that they're also helpful to us. Mm -hmm. And um, they learn from us the way we do things as well. So you've got what I would call a pretty inhospitable garden site. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with this because I grew up in Black Creek, which was similar. Great for growing Douglas fir trees, full of rocks, uh, quite sandy. How do you turn this um, great place for growing trees into a vegetable and flower oasis? Food and water. We have amendments, we have manure, and an irrigation system, mm -hmm. and um, basically that's how we do it, and good gardeners. So you've been doing this for 30 years, like, so do you notice the, the, the soil quality getting better? Our soil cannot get any better. You can't change the structure of our soil, so we just have to keep adding food and water. So this is, um, I mean, the Hollyhock site was originally a, a farm site, settled a long, long time ago. Is that right? Uh, the site was not this particular site, but the um, it was a homestead, yes. So what were people trying to grow here 100 years ago? They were growing fruit trees. You, you see, this is an old apple tree. Right. And there's a whole old orchard in the back. That's basically what they were growing. Is this a good place to grow fruit trees? Yes, yeah. it is. So do you guys still produce a lot of fruit that, that on the, on, for, the, for hollyhock? We produce quite a bit of fruit, yes. We have a wonderful fig tree in the hot tub area. How old is that fig? Oh, it's about 15 years old. So, you know, when I think of Cortez, I think of a northern discovery island. I don't think of a place that, that's, you know, amenable to things like fig trees. So tell me, like, do you have a microclimate here, or how do you deal with that? Yes, stuff? well, that's a hot spot. Yeah. And that's what the fig tree likes. So, as the season starts, uh, what are some of the flavors and some of the dishes that, that come out of, uh, out of either this garden or your own garden? Because you've got a garden just up the road. Um, you're eating out of it all year, you said. So where does spring start and, and what are you eating out of it? Well, early spring we're eating kale and leeks and potatoes that overwinter and carrots and beets. And uh, then as time goes on and we sow spinach, that's probably our first fresh food. And what? how early is spinach? Uh, can you harvest spinach here? In May. So are you, Late April, early yeah. May. And what, so right now it's uh, June, um, middle of June, and what, what are you eating now? 
Reading peas and kale. The kitchen likes a summer kale. Mm -hmm. We have growing. We have lots of greens, lots of lettuce. And sometimes you've, you've described it with having an overabundance, like you described how you've got strawberries coming on and what are you going to do with that? So can you just talk a little bit about how, what, you know, what, when you, I mean, Marika described in my conversation with her about how she gets inspired by what gardeners will tell her is coming, well, it's going to be picked that day. What kind of conversation do you have with the kitchen? Well, we just tell them what we have and often I will send recipes to our kitchen manager as suggestions of what she can do with them and um, there you go and you uh, like do you get ideas from your your staff and stuff like that are you guys eating together um, no we don't we eat together once a month we have mm -hmm. lunch but yeah I mean we'll come in if we've had something spectacular we'll share it with each other what we're eating because it's usually about the same Mm -hmm. basic food. I just came in, I just told these guys about curried peas. So tell me about the curried peas. What did you do with that? Well you just saute a bit of onion and curry powder and your fresh peas. And you've got lots of them coming on now? Lots. We have about eight or ten pounds a day. In your own garden? Here. Here. Right. So we can expect to see, I'm going to be here for another day or so, so we can expect to see lots of peas on the menu? I hope so. So the, the gardener also, or the, the, the cook also described, or Marika described how um, working here, or working in the kitchen is, is uh, an act of improvisation because they're always having to deal with not only what's fresh, but what might not be available. Um, how does that work for you guys? Like, like do, you, do you plan your planting around what the kitchen needs to do? Well, we, we plan our planting on what the kitchen requests us to grow, which makes sense to grow here. Not everything makes sense to grow here. Right. So what are some things that don't make sense to grow here? Um, carrots, broccoli, potatoes. We do grow shallots because they love them. Mm -hmm. But um, those kinds of things take up a lot of bed space, and then they're gone within a week or two. We like to grow things that we can continually pick. So what are those? I mean, I can see lots of them here, but can you tell me some of the things that you're picking pretty much the whole season long? Well, lettuce and greens and, and fresh herbs are all season long, and kale. Right, and then, and then as well as that, you've got, you've got tomatoes when they're in season, you've got beans, you've got squash in season. Um, are you providing all of the restaurant's needs around those, those items? Uh, at certain times, mm -hmm. we do, yes. So, uh, <clears throat> you got into this 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago. Uh, there are now a lot of, seem to be a lot of young people who want to do what you've been doing for a long time. What, what do you think about that? I think it's great. Yeah. yeah, I love the idea. And do you have lots of them showing up here, lots of these young people? Um, not necessarily, but whoever shows up and is interested, we like to give them a chance. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time with me, Nori. And um, this is one of the freshest food places I know of on, on the coast. For me, it's a, it's a wonderful place to eat, and I love hanging out in the garden. Thank you very much, Nori. Thank you.